you have to press a button that says go live on the top edit. Yeah. Uh, oh. Insert ads. Ooh, I can. It's still. Wait, it'll it'll come up. Oh, now live. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. All right. Hey guys, this is a customer's probably mid 2000s direct drive washer. Uh, my understanding is she's had it since new. Uh, it still works. She just wanted me to refurbish it so that it will last another 15, 20 years. I, I just finished testing it. it um, it's actually in really good condition. It, it does work. It needs a couple little minor things, but we're going to kind of go through it. I'm going to do uh, the thorough cleaning, I'm going to replace the clutch, the coupling, uh, the transmission shifts correctly and it neutral drains fine, so I'm not going to mess with the transmission other than just give it a wipe down and then put it all together and I think hopefully I can get that done in two hours, right? Yeah. You think so? Alright, I think so. Uh, I, I'm going to get started right away because I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Good afternoon, Max Shadow. How's it going? That's your last name. That's a sick last name. Shadow. Okay, you seen the Phillips uh, drill? Oh, this is the one with that goofy lid switch. It's like the one lid switch we don't carry. You remember that one? Yeah. yeah. It's like 40 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. it's crazy expensive. Okay. So this machine is pretty interesting. It does have an actual timed uh, bleach dispenser, which is pretty cool. This also has the ultra rinse system, which basically means that it will do multiple spray rinses in addition to a full tub rinse. So uh, you can rest assured that your clothes will be properly rinsed when this bad boy is done. And so basically the way I'm gonna kind of tear into it is I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the, the tub cover, the inner spin basket, and I'm gonna kind of get to the tub so we could clean all this uh, goo out and get it kind of sparkly. <coughs> I'll inspect the drive block and replace <coughs> if needed, which I don't, this has not been a common uh, failure at, at this like era of machine. And then after that, I'll pull the bottom guts out and we'll do a little rebuild there. I'll do a quick paint if I need to. It looks like I might need to do a little bit of black paint on the frame. And then we'll just start putting it back together. So hopefully this will be uh, not super long, so we'll see what happens. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, this wow. one is kind of grimy. The only thing that's actually broke on this is it needs agitator dogs. That's <laughs> really the only broken thing on this machine. But it is dirty, that's for sure. So no, no getting around to that. This is definitely a well used machine. Right, so I need my 716 switch. I think I have that here. No, yeah, that's it. You think she was a fabric softener person? Yeah, like yeah, no, there is some fabric softener, at least at some point. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't look like fresh fabric softener, so I'm not really sure. I'm convinced that the fabric softener is like what causes machines to get like dirty. Or like kind of like stinky or whatever. My mom used to use those little like scent booster things. You know what I'm about? Isn't that like just wax, basically? Yeah, like I, so it has a lot of, yeah, paraffin wax and stuff. That that's what like makes the scent stick to your clothes. I, I will say it did smell pretty good, but. <laughs> All right, I got some. I got some stuff stuck in there. I can't reach the bowl. Here for the direct drive fix. Yep, yep. <clears throat> So the agitator dogs broke and they like kind of accumulated at the bottom here and I can't get a good bite on the, the agitator bolt. Let's see, that might be it. Is your opinion on the GE Ultra Fresh front load washers? Is that like a newer? Yeah. I haven't tested one. I have like my, I have my gripes about like GE laundry in general. Like, I think GE makes fantastic kitchen appliances. Like I think their stoves and refrigerators are really nice. Their dishwashers are kind of like, they're kind of cheap, but like they do work okay. But I never liked the laundry. Like I never liked the old ones. I never liked the new ones. I feel like the front loaders were just like kind of mediocre at best. Oh, be right back. And I don't know. I just I'm just not a fan of them, which is why I kind of don't sell them. You'll maybe like you have like a one in a thousand chance of me of coming into my store and finding a GE laundry appliance is it's certainly very rare. So this is what happened to the agitator dogs. They're basically non-existent. There's just like these little nubs left. So yeah, it's, we'll put new ones in that, and that'll increase the performance dramatically, that's for sure. They usually move out, and you can take like a minute and a half first. For what? Those guys are talking about some work at 60 bit. <sighs> guys, give me one second, I'll be right back. I got a customer. Yeah, if you're coming from the 
All right, guys, I'm back. Ugh. Um, so basically, I got my tub wrench here, and I'm going to remove the, um, what's it called? The tub nut. Yuck. It's actually not that bad for so many years of like, build up. Alright, let me see if I can move you guys forward a little bit. Sorry guys, I keep on ordering like a longer cord from like Amazon. They keep sending me defective cords and it is infuriating because I only have, I, I don't know, two feet or two and a half feet between the computer and the camera and it's, it's frustrating. I ordered another, yet another cord. Are you looking for that knob? We definitely don't have that knob. Like a, that's it's an old hot point knob. Yeah, that's if we had that, we would have that listed. That's for sure. I'm gonna let a little water in. on dish soap.
a little scuzzy. This, uh, whatever this soap scum is definitely adhered to the, the donut seal very good. Oh, uh, if you guys can let us know um, what day and time, if we were going to do a second live stream during the week, what, you know, what day and time would be best for you guys? I tried to make a poll, but it doesn't seem to work. So that's pretty clean now guys there's still a little gosh I, I don't know what I gotta scrape this a little bit either that I need to maybe spray it with some oven cleaner or something so it's kind of thick Sure you guys would get bored of watching after everyday live streams. <laughs> it does become pretty monotonous, that's for sure. Someone said they're looking forward to seeing some washer videos. 
yeah so that's where I was a little bit torn guys I was wondering like do you guys prefer that I do the repair videos or would you guys rather watch the video of it line. running or both or like because like that speed queen i finished and i didn't really think that i don't know just doing a full a full wash video live i didn't know if you guys would want to see that or not i'll certainly do it if you guys want to that's for sure but um i just kind of figured i'd put those like in like the regular videos that i feel like the repair live streams can be more uh, thorough over like the videos per se, and then like the videos can do like wash. Now that oven cleaner did the trick, that's for sure. Ricky, Ricky, the title is not misleading. This is just part of the the rebuild. We gotta we gotta clean it at some point, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. The important. This is like the the worst part of the rebuild, honestly, is the this cleaning. Is the part that would be edited out of a video, for sure. Or, or at the very least, fast forward. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry guys, I'm almost done. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. All right, I'm gonna let that soak. <clears throat> There's like a kind of a yellow tinted stain on the top of this tub <coughs> kind of like where the water line is <clears throat> so hopefully this oven cleaner will dissolve it it's probably some sort of oil or grease or something all right so the next uh thing we're gonna do so we're gonna rebuild this guy even though this is like not dirty and kind of has no bearing on you know the the quality of your finished laundry you kind of just want it to look nice because this is you know the customer will see this and you know you just want to do a good job and you could uh you could actually split this apart i'm going to spray it down first and see if it uh comes clean that way Came a little bit better, but I'm gonna split it. There you go. See, we crack it in half. And now we can really get this little bit of hard water deposits.
Where is my brush? What did I do with my brush? So this is pretty good. There's still a little hard water, like right here, but I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute, and eventually I should be able to just kind of, kind of nick it off with my fingernail, and uh, then I'll just kind of clip it back together, and it'll look just like new. So this is, we're well on our way with that. All right, so this is going to, the tub is going to sit for a little bit. I'm not going to bore you guys with more cleaning. I'm going to try and pull the uh, transmission and motor out, and we can kind of get to that. And then, uh, unfortunately, guys, it's, most, it's going to be more cleaning, and then I'll put it back together. But, yeah, refurbishing these direct drives, the, the actual repair part is uh, pretty quick. Uh, I could probably, if I was just doing a mechanical repair, I could probably be done in no time flat. But if I'm uh, doing the cleaning part, it's just like you have to clean it till it's clean. So like, you know, it, there's no telling how long it will take. This one's not that bad, but it's not that good either. <sighs> So, Marcus, I gotta tip this bag. Yeah, I'm gonna tip it back in this chair. And then I gotta reposition the camera. There we go. Yeah, I can't, I can't sit down. I know. It's been like. I'm certainly not complaining, guys, but it's been busy today. Sorry guys, there's some drops on the camera lens. So I got, I got to use there we go. So right. Right. Uh, we unplugged it again, and then the first step is we're going to unclip the pump, we're going to unclip the motor wires, and then as an entire unit we'll remove the motor and the transmission and it'll just slide right out. And you need a half inch socket uh, to remove the transmission and that's really about it as far as tools go young and you first learn how to swear and you just kind of like throw it in everywhere <laughs> he was like it was so <laughs> was he? extra man it was <laughs> drunken sailor yeah yeah like, great <laughs> it's funny oh i'll tell you one of the funnest things about working here is like the i wouldn't call it people watching but it's like people that come into the store you, you never know. You literally never know. It is true. You certainly get all walks of life, that's for sure. Everyone's got to wash clothes.
piece of paper on the uh, motor there. You know, it's um, I've heard two two theories about it. One I've heard it was like a, a noise isolator, and then somebody else told me that it was um. I think it was like to keep stuff from like getting in from the underside of the motor, but I, I have no idea, guys. That, <laughs> I know that you know they wouldn't have put it in if it didn't serve a, kind of a useful purpose. Okay, but like what it is exactly, I, I kind of don't know, honestly. Like what it's exact sole purpose in life to do is is kind of beyond me okay let me so guys this is the and look it already has a six pad clutch in it like this machine is a was a pretty well taken care of machine and it evidently I'm not aware that, that this machine would have ever came standard with a six pad clutch. So I, I would I would wager that somebody had replaced it at some point, if I had to take a guess. It does just still have a factory coupling in it, but we'll find out once I with the clutch looks like it's in good condition. Stuff. It's in great condition. Like this washer, like all it needed was agitator dogs. Like mm. she Essentially, the customer wanted me to take it apart and clean it, put it back together. So, but like, you can't just like not refurbish it like while you're there. It would be kind of foolish. Wow, oh, this even has the original like all plastic coupling. Just not too many of those have survived. You want one of these? I need, yeah, I need the commercial and then I need the commercial clutch, which is right above it. And then I'm gonna need a water pump. And then I need those lint filter plugs. Okay, I'll go grab all of that. Again. And the agitator dogs I have here, that's it. Okay. That's all, that's all. Uh, uh, so drain pump and the plug. Yeah, the plugs and the in the drain pump. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do the clutch first, and then I'll get to the motor. screwdriver or could I do it with this one? No, let me get my skinnier screwdriver. Is it the same size one, right? No, no, no. It's a, it's a standard one. So that's this, right? Uh, no, this is the two same size ones. Oh. Alright, let me get This shaft is in really good condition. There's usually like a wear mark on it from like a top post leak or something, but this uh, this one's definitely in good shape.
coupling out while I'm here. So guys, I got this weird conspiracy theory about the plastic and then the metal insert couplings. So every machine is designed to have like, it's like an intentional weak link. And it's not that they put it there to fail, but they put it there so that if there's ever like an extreme situation that something will give like in lieu of like burning wires, burning the motor up, burning the timer up. And so that's what this coupling was. This was like the natural break point to, to disconnect the, the motor from the drive system. And so with these plastic couplings, it's like if you overloaded your machine regularly, you would break these. Well, then they came out with the metal insert couplings, which they called the 275, no, 285753 is the plastic. And then they put an A afterwards for the metal one. But here's the thing. So once you put the metal one on, the metal is stronger than the shaft of the motor. And so if you do continue to overload the machine, eventually you're actually going to strip the shaft of the motor and that repair is going to be, you know, hundreds of dollars for a motor versus 20 bucks for a coupling. So like, I wonder if this was like some devious plan by the engineers to like get these direct drives off the market because the metal coupling, like, theoretically could destroy your machine if you continue to abuse it. So, I don't know. You guys could take off your tinfoil hats now. <laughs> That's what I think. I don't know. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with it. It's my story. just do uh jerome i don't know what i just did i'm sorry <laughs> what did you just do? i just like this like thing came up and i accidentally pressed the button and it deleted his messages i didn't mean to do that how do i do that it's okay whatever <laughs> no, I did you eat like eggs did you like oh i see what i, I I accidentally put him in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <you> sorry. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Is it really called timeout? Yeah. Well, that's crazy. I did not mean to do that. That's funny. Okay, so this uh, transmission is done. Move that to the side. The motor is next. And I'm gonna grab my... Can you give me the paintbrush? That little, yeah, that little one.
And then new coupling number two. And so the, this part never goes bad. This is kind of a part that they make you like feel good about yourself because I've, well, I've seen these break before, but they this is like a very rare failure. And so they put this as like a laminated, like rubber, it's almost like a tire, like belted and stuff. So it's never gonna go bad, but they never really went bad to begin with. So it's kind of like a, um, what do they call it? A placebo. <laughs> that is the placebo effect, right? The placebo effect. Oh, I lost the donut. Did you see a cushion go somewhere? Okay. Well, that is ready. I'm gonna clean and wipe down the frame. Then I'm going to, I have to do a tiny bit of touch up painting. And then I'm basically ready. Well, I still have to do a lot of cleaning guys, so. I'm going to do like a little bit of touch up painting on the frame and then um, we'll probably like just like take a break. I mean, we'll still be live, but I'm basically going to be cleaning for probably the next 20 minutes. And then once I have everything clean, then we can start putting everything back together. So let's I'll get the frame straightened out first so that. Man, it is hot. They used to make a sound deadening panel for this machine, but it's a, uh, they don't make it anymore. I wish I could get some because those really do make a big difference as far as dissipating the noise before it gets to an annoying level. TCs, but I have it Prompt leaning up. against my phone. I don't. It's okay as long as you. I mean, quite frankly, you should put the phone by you, so I don't need to see it. But I need the anti C's, that's for sure.
You know, one other thing that is worth checking, but rarely ever goes bad, is between the base and this triangle plate, there's these, uh, they're called snubber pads. And it is a really rare failure item, but they do occasionally go bad. These are perfect. These are like in new condition. So if you have like a lot of like off balance situations in your life, then you might want to check those during your refurbishment. Uh, Eugene, where did they put the sound deadening panel? Is it along the bottom of the frame? Like Yeah, so there's like a little U channel right right here. Mm. And then it would actually set like on top of this. So it's like it would, they're like no no screws held it in. It just mm. Oh no, I take that back. There was like a screw like that fits somewhere. I, I don't remember where exactly. Maybe this frame doesn't have like the punch out for it. But there was one way to secure it. But you could just stick them underneath there. It's they don't need to attach. It's just a piece of styrofoam. Not styrofoam, but like fiberglass. Insulation. And so guys, like the purpose of painting, you know, a lot of people like might think that like it's to like make it like look new. It's really not the point. The the point of the paint is to really like inhibit rust from either starting or continuing. And I don't you know, a side effect of painting is that it does tend to look nice afterwards. Um but the main reason I paint is to like encapsulate the rust and just keep things from rusting any further so i don't uh i don't go too crazy with it like if you want to like make your washer a showpiece it's like what's really the point of owning it because you're going to be too afraid to use it you know like what if i got it all like powder coated black and you know super nice I'll take a picture of it you know and then... yeah and then put the cabinet on it so nobody will ever see yeah. it <laughs> yeah that's just not my style i don't like i really don't like restoring things to like perfect mint condition i just feel like it kind of takes away like the character of things like i don't know i used to be very much an antique dealer and I used to collect kind of a lot of antiques and you know, nobody really wants like the refinished dresser. They want like the original like crazed varnish finish and you know, because that like, I know this isn't furniture, but you kind of want it to look like it's got some age to it. You know, I don't know. But then again, guys, we're talking about washing machines. so. <laughs> Let's step it, tone it down a little bit, you know. Okay. Okay. So I just got to do a little touch up here, a little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit on this side edge here, and then it will be good to go. Let me grab the paint.
that's everything. This washer is actually in really, really good condition. The more I look at it, I was kind of, I don't know, maybe a little concerned when I first opened it up because it kind of looked a little grimy, but it's actually pretty nice. So with the legs, I use a little bit of anti-seize and I'll put a thin amount at the very bottom and then I'll back that locking nut so it kind of lives in that anti-seize. And then I'll take kind of a larger amount and then I'll, I'm kind of going to coat the whole thing, which I know is a bit overkill, but you've never had a stuck direct drive leg before. Let me tell you, they're a real pain in the butt to get loose. And hopefully this will like just kind of dry in place and, and be there for eternity. Oh, it's so easy to put these legs in now. And that's it. You just want to leave a nice thin coating on it so it doesn't... Especially the right side. The right side's like the bleach side. That's where really all the the rusting usually happens is people over pour their bleach a little bit and it causes all sorts of headaches. You guys are probably thinking I'm getting black paint on my hands, but this paint is already dry. It's, um, I use like an acetone based uh, paint. It's actually a, a Whirlpool product. So it's, uh, it's the stuff that they use on service calls. And they use it because it dries very quickly. So you could go to a customer's house and touch up a scratch or whatever, and um, it'll be done by the time you're ready to leave, so it's kind of cool. All right, so we got that. That's all for the no, the never sees. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, uh, the power module here, and I'm gonna put a thin coat of oil on the shaft, and then we're going to put it back in and bolt it down. And at that point, I'll be ready to stand up the machine. I'll put the water pump in while I have it tilted back, but then I'm going to stand up the machine and uh, then I'm, I got to get to the cleaning part, which is kind of the, you know, that's the tedious part, guys. That's, that's what I get paid for, I suppose, to a certain degree. Just a thin coat of oil is really all you need. If you put too much, it's going to drip down and it's going to get into your uh, clutch assembly. It's going to cause your clutch to start slipping. And you'll have given yourself an unnecessary service call. There we go. That's the seven sixteenth. 
Oh, there it is. So guys, I have this like, I know this was probably just like a, like a blip in the radar, but at one point these white pumps were like the worst thing ever. They were like broken. They, they broke very quickly. Like the, the pump seal burned through the front here and like they just always leaked. And so anytime we ever serviced any direct drive, they had a white water pump. We would always change it to the the kind of the tan colored so this is the uh like the tan colored one this one like is very reliable so it's like i don't know what it was about it but you know something in this design was just kind of really crummy i gotta get my pliers So you guys, if you guys ever want to do this like on your own, like you don't have to necessarily worry too much about getting like every like little speck of dirt from the inside. What you want to do is you really want to like just kind of agitate as much as you can. And the, the final like sterilization process that I do is uh, I'll fill this machine, I'll let it fill and then I'll shut it off and I'll manually fill it uh, basically to the tippy top and I use a pretty healthy dose of bleach and I'll let it sit overnight and you know that just gives it plenty of time to kind of soak in and just kill everything and that has been the kind of the best thing for me as far as 
getting any type of like residual odors or because this this machine does have like a weird funk to it and like there's no way i'm going to be able to get into like every little rib of this thing and it's really kind of like doesn't really make sense to just replace it you know what i mean it's like so you just soak it and like you let the machine kind of it's pretty good about washing itself it's just every 20 years or so you got to give it a little you know a little deep cleaning that's all Like the same with this drain hose, this has got quite a bit of goo and so once I put some bleach through it, it'll probably be fine. Another really effective um, cleaner is like you could use ammonia. Ammonia is a really, really, really good degreaser. Um, but make sure you don't use both because that's like toxic. You use one or the other. But ammonia is the active ingredient in a uh, oven cleaner. And most of this like goo on these machines are like paraffin oils like oil wax like stuff that a degreaser would do a good job of removing and that's why I use a lot of oven cleaners because you know it's an excellent degreaser it does stink but it is an excellent degreaser out of the way so I am basically done down here I'm gonna give you guys a shot towards the sink so you're gonna watch me clean for the next 20 or so minutes, I'm pretty sure. I'll, um, I have to clean the spin basket. I have to clean the agitator. I gotta clean the, I got a lot to clean guys. So if you need to take a water break or something, now's the time. <laughs> some oven cleaner to the face, man. Oof.
Hey, Marcus. Yeah. Can you grab me another clean oven cleaner? guy that was here last week? Yeah, the guy who used to... Yeah, make... yeah, the LGs. Yeah, I sold him one, a white one. I told him we'd take his old one. Sold it. I gave him a deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, dude, it... he's like ex-employee, bro. Yeah, and uh, I, I told him he needs it delivered before Saturday next week, and I told him, like, we'd try and, like, he just needs it dropped off. I told him we would try and do it maybe when we go scrap or something. We. He's so... in Fairview, right? Yeah, but... You know, he's going on vacation, so like, kind of needs it. I was like, all right, we'll figure something out. All right. I was just told him to go take the truck and go. Right. Dude, I, the truck showed up right after he left. I was thinking about it, but a little too late. Yeah, he's, um, he's a good dude. He didn't do service, did he? He just learned from you? No, he would come in, he would come in and, uh, He, he just wanted to learn how to fix stuff, and he did his own, like, he never did any work for me, per se. Yeah. But he, um, like, he kind of was, like, thinking, like, he wanted to, he was doing more, like, handyman stuff. Yeah. He kind of wanted to add, he wanted to add, like, appliance repair to, like, his, uh, his wheelhouse, nice. and, but then, like, his, that, like, the people that he quit from, he, they, Made him an Juiced offer. up the offer. Yeah, they they made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. Right. Because like he did not want to go back, but he's like, it's like Eugene. They offered me stupid money, so I'm like, I don't, uh, I don't blame you, dude. <laughs> like, hey, Eugene, can you come look at this real quick? Thank you. I just sold this guy, so that's the right one, right? He's like, he's like, how do I? That's what the red wire is for, right? No, that that red wire goes there. What, what's his question? I don't know. What's his What's his old one? Hold on a second. I don't understand what what's his question. If that that was his old one, right? Yeah, that looks like his old one. Yeah, he's saying it's like not working. What's not working about it? I think I, I so. Right. I sold him the one with the red wire and heating element. It shows you like how to do that. Two seven nine eight one six. Like, if not, tell them you you could give them like the other thermostat. It's just like it's quite frankly more difficult to install.
oven cleaner will definitely let you know if you got an open wound somewhere. Ouch. This is why it sounds more like this needs to go there, right? And then that is where the jumper goes from there to there. What? Right? That's what you said. This goes there, and then the jumper wire goes from there to there. No, man. No. He's got two wires, man. Yeah. He's got two wires. He's got yeah. one with the plastic coating. Yeah. That one goes at the top of the thermostat. Yeah. And then that big thick wire only goes into the heating element. It oh. only fits one. It won't fit anywhere else. And then the, the jumper wire goes between the thermostat and the heating element. It's like it's easier to show somebody. So like I know. I mean, how far away does he live? If he lives close by, just tell him to come by and I'll do it for him.
back in the same way, except for that red cord, right? Like, that's the jumper wire. Like, it's all the same. Just add the jumper wire. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he was he was just thinking too. Did you send him, like, a link to a yeah, YouTube video? Yeah, I did. He was, he was getting too deep into it. that new stuff yeah and I mean I would like to get some of those fridges so they can run over the weekend I know I'm I, I just don't want to but like you're gonna like where that's a problem we're gonna clog up the truck I mean let's let's just let's just put the new stuff on and we'll do it for some of my own okay. we're gonna have to like scrap and stuff Thank you. 
One second, guys. Um, hey, did he speak with Marcus?
Last piece, guys. Last but not least. So when it comes to like the rebuilding process, I don't um, I don't have to necessarily get like all the exposed parts like immaculate clean. Because after I'm done with this, I'm gonna do a bleach wash. And after I get the bleach wash, I'll do a couple of loads of laundry. Um, and then I'll do another bleach. And that's for the one where it soaks overnight. And then I drain it and then I wash it again twice empty. And then I put it on the floor and my detailer will come in and kind of just really kind of go over like, you know, he does like the knobs and stuff and, and just like the real like nitty gritty. Um, it really kind of puts a polish on it, so to speak. Uh, but he can't get to anything on the inside. So that's why I have to focus most of my attention on like the innards. But, um, you know, something like the, the agitator, which I got it perfectly clean, basically. Um, I have to focus a lot on the underside, but I don't have to focus so much on the top side, so I don't know if that makes any sense at all. It's on the bag, dude. Oh, right. Dude, it's like 279816, I think. That's... Oh. 379767. Yeah, we, I know we have them. That's all. That's all I could say about that. Cool. So guys, the tub didn't turn out perfect. This is actually rust, um, which is not ideal, but it's not the end of the world either. It's kind of just kind of par of the course with the machine this age. It'd be kind of cool if we could put new ones in, but they don't, um, they're not available anymore. It's a couple of people that still have them, but they're very cost prohibitive to ship. 
And then, like, you have, like, people who just want to hoard them, too. So once we get the tub in, um, our nut is going to go in, it's three different pieces. It's This is the collar, this is a white tab, and then the actual uh, tub nut. The nice thing about this nut is that it's self-centering. It centers the tub for you.
Okay. <sighs> In the home stretch, guys. Home stretch. Not really, but the mechanical aspect that we're basically done. I'm gonna put finish putting the agitator together. I'm gonna put the tub cover on, and then I'm going to uh, put the fill spout back on. And I guess I have enough time to do like a quick test, uh, like just like a quick fill and wash. Um, but I can't put it back together yet because I still have to. I have to clean the cabinet inside and out. And then I put like a soundproofing, a sound deadening material in there. Um, and then I have to like do all the cleaning like back here. I have to like, you know, this is grimy and, and you know, just kind of just touch up stuff on the inside. And um, then I'll put it all back together. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll do a live stream um, someday during the week while I'm testing this machine. Um, but I need another like probably two, three or like two or three hours to actually finish cleaning and, and getting this kind of buttoned up, I, I suppose. Um, but yeah, let me hurry up and just get it kind of back together so we could at least give it a little courtesy spin. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. See, I really need to kind of scrub. This is like, it's like hard water, so it's kind of hard to get it off the plastic. And you can't use an SOS pad because you'll scratch the plastic, so you just kind of have to like, either spray it with oven cleaner and let it sit, or you just gotta like put some muscle and deal with it. Okay. Then we're going to put the bleach doodad plug hit back in. One other thing I do is, uh, because the wire is just kind of dangling there, I'll always like tape the wire to the tub. Because uh, last time I did one of these, I sold it to a customer. And they called me like a week later and they're like, this thing's making a real racket noise when it's spinning. And I'm like, that's impossible. And I guess I didn't realize that, you know, I guess this guy put like something wildly off balance and uh, it caused that wire to like, Kind of make a slapping noise. It was terrible. It was a long drive too. It was a long drive for a piece of tape, that's for sure. So now I, I just preemptively tape it. I'm actually surprised it wasn't taped from the factory. So why are you guys so fond of appliances in general? Like, I'll tell you, like ever since I was a kid, I've always been fascinated with like, just like machinery in general. And, and I've always been like a mechanically inclined type of, you know, type of person. And I always like gravitated towards like washing machines, even when I was a kid, like my mother had an old 80s belt drive washer that I used to 
Um, I used to really enjoy like watching it. Like I thought it was um, really cool. I, I never really like. I don't know how to explain it, but I never really got into like the the actual washing part of it. But I was very fascinated with like the the mechanical aspect of it because. For those of you who know what a belt drive washer is, it's pretty like complicated mechanically. And uh, I think I thought it was really cool. And that, that's what kind of like sparked my interest in um, mechanical things in general. And my dad was, uh, when I was a little kid, my dad had like a little food processing plant. And he used to make. Um, he used to make those little jelly cups that you find at the restaurants and um, you know my dad like taught me how to like fix those machines and so I, I have like a quote unquote a background in industrial machinery but um, uh, very I would say very little in the way of practical uh, knowledge I mean I fixed them for my father as needed and then my brother ended up taking over the plant and and I assist there as needed um usually when he's got a big project going on I'll I'll you know throw a pledge or whatever but uh I wouldn't call myself an expert but because those machines are even though they're very complicated they're actually quite simple because they're those people that design those machines they use some pretty common off-the-shelf stuff like you know pretty common bearings and pretty common like I don't know, like controls, like industrial controls are, are very kind of universal in a sense. So you're, they're not, they're basically a, a part doesn't really go like NLA or anything like that. So I don't know, but it, it's a lot of fun, but they're, they're heavy and you know, they're, when they're broken, like they need to be fixed like yesterday. Cause like every like minute the, the line is down it like costs like thousands of dollars and stuff like that and it's that's a little too intense for me i really enjoy working at my own pace i really like coming here on sundays and i know it's like terrible of me so I should be at home which I do stay home quite a bit late lately I have been at least um, but it's like it's really quiet in here it's very peaceful and so like Sundays are like the days that I have like my best time like I, I it's pitch quiet and I could just kind of turn on some music and really like get some stuff done here like I have a vintage stove that I need to redo for a customer. I have a vintage cooktop that I'm redoing for a customer. This washer and then another customer dropped off a washer not that long ago. So I have my hands full. And and I, not to mention I have 50 of my own things that I need to fix, so. Okay. How's it going? You all set, Marcus? Everything good? Yeah. Done with the customers? Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm like, I'm not done, but I think I'm ready to I could actually give them a little, a little, a little sneak peek, yeah. Right. So let's. Oh wow, it's really clean. It's it's much cleaner than it was. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah it is. Didn't... Someone asked what your zodiac sign was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Leo, actually. My birthday's coming up pretty soon. All right, guys, I'm going to switch to, I'm going to do lo just like a low, uh, let me give it a spin first. It's nice. Can I, uh, can you scoot me in just a tiny bit? Don't I? Check it. Alright, 
Hopefully you come up and ask for some of these guys here for a lot now. Yeah. Nice for you. Probably full of it, but it had a made a compelling taste. <laughs> Wait, what does she look like? She's like missing a lot of teeth. She's like an old white lady? Yeah. Ponytail? Yeah. Oh god, she's a scammer. Dude. Yeah? Yeah, did her kid die or something? No, she had cancer. Oh, <laughs> that's what she's saying now. Yeah, no, she's been, she's been doing that for like 15 years, bro. I mean, I listen, I'd rather someone ask for a drink than a cigarette. You well, that's mean. true. That's true. I'm surprised she, she didn't ask you for money. No. Maybe it's not the same lady. No, but. it's her. That's yeah. not her. Just, she's been in this neighborhood forever. Forever. Like, she literally goes around. She's like, she's been hanging around like... Um, 650 in Detroit a lot. Uh, when she got those teeth removed, drastic change, 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 I feel sorry for people like that, you know? Me too. Some probably, days I don't, and it's like, I feel bad, but some days I definitely do. It's more like, it, it's not like, it, she's not like a drug addict. Right. She's just like mentally ill. Yeah. Like, like, you know, I'm like, what do you do about that? Like, it's like the quintessential problem of society is that yeah. like nobody wants to deal with like the mentally ill. Right. Like, I don't know. Man, do you even clean out the inlet valve? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Do you know who's washing this thing? Yeah. I didn't realize it until like after I picked it up. It's my like one of my good friends' mother-in-law. Huh? Like, really? Yeah. Yeah. So she saw the washer that I gave them. So like, I, I basically, I, I, I sold it to him for nothing. Like, I yeah, sold him yeah. a refurbished set for, like, three months. Yeah, yeah. But it was, like, a housewarming set. And, like, when the when her mother, the, the, the wife, when her mother came over, she, like, freaked out. She was like, oh, it's awesome. And then she goes online looking for, like, refurbishment services and then finds me and didn't realize <laughs> that, like, we all knew each other. Nice. Yeah, it's cool. I'm gonna go right to spin. You can see all the floaters. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, I got it in the hall. Like little tint didn't come out. I sprayed it three times, but looks good. Though. It's clean though. Yeah, it is good. clean. Well, there you have it, guys. So we had the neutral drain. We had a nice fill, nice wash, nice spin. I'm going to, like I said, I'm probably about halfway done with this machine, so. I gotta, I gotta do some work to the cabinet. I still have like a lot more like cleaning to do. I just realized I forgot to put the lint filter plugs underneath the agitator, so I gotta pull the agitator out and uh, install those. Uh, but other than that, like we're kind of, uh, you know, the, the bulk of the hard work is done. Like the cleaning is the stuff that kind of like is like a bummer, you know, but once it's all kind of together, I'll do um, a few test loads. And then I'll probably bring you guys back to do, um, what was the consensus on the live stream? It was just, there was none. I heard a, there was a few Wednesdays. Okay. A few Wednesdays. Or are you talking about like what type? Like a live, like to do a wash. Cause I'm like the next oh, thing I'm going to yeah. do to this is wash. Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. Yeah, we do Wednesday. All right. So maybe Wednesday, uh, we'll do another live stream of this machine actually running. Um, and we'll do some laundry in it and kind of get some get some miles on it before we get it ready to go off to its new customer or that 
its owner, rather, I should say. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, leave a comment if you guys want to see anything uh, specific for any future live stream. We will read it and at least consider it. Uh, if you guys want to see more wash videos, like let me know. If you guys want to see more repair videos, just uh, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Dude, that guy.